Hey everybody, Seth from Next Adventure here. Today I'm gonna to be doing a walkthrough and an on the water review of the all new Riot Mako 14. All right, so real briefly, I'll touch on the specs. Uh, the Riot Mako 14 is about 14 feet long, 38 inches wide, so it is a bigger kayak for sure. Um, if you've seen the Mako 12 or the Mako 10, obviously those are kind of your smaller, sportier models. Um, this thing is more the aircraft carrier kind of competing in that um, 14 foot pedal driven range. Um, that in mind, we're gonna start up here at the bow and work our way back. So um, first thing I noticed about this kayak is that it has just a ton of rocker, which is pretty true to the Mako line. Um, all of the Riot Makos are pretty rockered in the bow, which is good um, in, in squirrelier conditions, right? When you have some wind and some small waves and stuff, um, it's gonna keep the ride a little drier, kind of riding over those instead of punching into them. Next up, they've got a really sweet molded in handle up here, which is really stout. Um, good for if you've got a cart that you're carrying the kayak on. I carried it all the way down here to the dock um, using this handle and made it really easy. So that's awesome. Um, there is a just a ton of gear tracks right here up at the front, which is pretty wild. Um, of course, most kayaks these days come with gear tracks on them. Um, this thing has just got gear tracks everywhere. Um, we've got three right here um, off the bat that are kind of in the bow storage area. Uh, two more up here that are running right along the top as well that have a ton of space. So you really have options to mount a ton of things. All right, so moving back uh, further in that bow storage area, we've got a couple of scupper holes here. So if you get some water over the bow, that's gonna drain right out. Um, it's actually pretty well thought out. It's here in the lowest point of the bow. So the water will come down the bow, pull up right here and then drain out. That's awesome as well. Um, we've got a through hole hatch here. So this is just gonna be open hole storage. If you throw something in here, just go straight in the hole. There's not a pocket or anything like that for it. Um, it's still awesome if you've got, you know, a bunch of gear that you throw in a dry bag or something. It's a good place to store it. Um, we've also got these, uh, these smaller hatches, which are kind of interesting. Um, so if you open these up with the little bungees, You've got some sealed off storage. I wouldn't quite call this dry storage. Um, there's not like a gasket liner or anything in here to really keep it watertight. So it's really more of like a semi dry storage area. Um, but the other interesting part about this is that these aren't actually attached to the boat. So they just pull right out. Um, and if you wanted to, you'd have a more open storage area here instead of having these in there. Um, the upside of that is of course, if you didn't want to have an enclosed hatch right there, you have the open deal. Um, the only downside would be that these aren't actually physically attached to the boat um, in any way. If you were worried about flipping and, and losing them or something, um, then you could really easily get a couple of tie down points right here. Um, another one of those on the other side, which is cool. So you've got just, even just in the bow of this boat, a uh, ton of storage. All right, so we're gonna move back to the drive here. Uh, this is the Riot Impulse Drive, uh, which comes on any of your other Riot kayaks, uh, Mako 12, Mako 10. Um, they've both got this exact same drive. Um, it latches in, kind of got these interesting little cotter pin releases here. So that's kind of what holds it in place in the down position. So now I've released that. And then if you wanted to just kind of cruise around, you've also got this upright position um, where you kind of store it up high. So you can have it clipped in up here, if you're not using it, or if you're just rolling it down to the water and you don't want to have it deployed. And then, uh, yeah, if you wanted to deploy it, you pop it down. And that's, you know, most pedal driven kayaks don't have two separate areas, but the nice thing is it really does get it up out of the way. Um, you have plenty of room here now um, if you need it. And then it actually is really surprisingly easy to switch back into that down position. Um, which, you know, when I first looked at it and I saw that you had to move it up like that, I, I thought that was kind of a little cumbersome, but they're so close together and it's, it's almost just as easy to pull back out as, as a lot of the other kind of price point pedal driven kayaks out there are. But moving back just a tiny bit more, um, you've got two more extremely long gear tracks that run pretty much the length of what you would consider the cockpit. Um, and they actually have right attached to these gear tracks, which are metal, by the way. Uh, a couple of kind of foam handles and a molding around it. So you've got a couple side handles here if you just needed to like tip the kayak up really quick or something. Um, those are actually really nice and really comfortable to grab onto. Um, two more gear tracks right here in front of the seat. Like I said, gear tracks everywhere. Um, some small bungeed in tackle storage right here. And then this is actually your rudder um, deploy and retrieval. So it's up right now. 
and now it's down, super easy. And then if I wanna pull it back up, so um, that system actually is really simple. It appears to just be a piece of uh, paracord that runs through the boat. And I was really surprised at how well it works. I mean, it's that, and that, and you can actually hear the rudder retrieving. Super, super simple, love it. All right, so we'll move it back to the seating area here. Um, the seat track mounts, which is, um, this is actually in the grand scheme of track mounting uh, seats. This one was pretty easy. Um, you've just got your four knobs here. Uh, you loosen those up pretty good and then you slide um, slide the seat in. The part of this that I didn't notice at first, uh, when I opened the packaging to put this together, um, these bars were much smaller. Um, you've got also these knobs with little wing nuts on the back. You're gonna wanna loosen those up. Uh, the reason for this is that these tracks that the seat mounts on, they, they aren't this, a set width, right? Because the kayak's not the same width all the way. So they kind of contour with the kayak. And so they're wider in the back and they get narrower towards the front. And so having this, um, this knob system that allows these bars to expand just makes it so that as you move your seat forward in, uh, in the cockpit, um, those, those bars will kind of narrow as long as you have these knobs loosened. Uh, and it makes it a lot easier to move the seat back and forth, which is pretty cool. You've also got a nice stitched framed seat. Uh, that sits fairly high up. You know, you're not you're not towering like you're in a stadium chair or recline or anything. Um, but at a good height, clear of the deck, it's going to keep you nice and dry. Um, and we've seen plenty of, of frame seat designs like this on the market. Um, this one looks, you know, nice and comfy. Um, has some nice little adjustment here, so you can recline and lean further forward. Uh, and then right next to the seat over here is the uh, rudder steering handle, track mounted as well. So whenever you move the seat forward uh, or backwards, you can move the, uh, the steering handle uh, along with it. All right, so we'll move on back to the uh, rear storage area now. Um, this is where things on this kayak get pretty interesting. Uh, so as you can see, it, there's just a huge amount of space back here. Uh, and you could fit, I mean, pretty much any amount of gear that you would need to fit. Um, on top of that, once again, more gear tracks. You've got two gear tracks that have been running under the seat pan that kind of extend back here. Uh, another running from side to side of the boat. Two more uh, down here on the back. Uh, two more up here on top. So tons and tons of space to mount things. Um, you've got a small hatch right here that goes into the hole. It actually comes with a little cat bag. Um, so this is sealed off. This little cat bag pops out and you've got access into the hole now in case you ever need to mess with your rudder lines or anything like that. Um, those are gonna be right here. The really kind of unique uh, thing about the Mako 14 is this open transom. So if you follow like motorboat design or sailboat design, um, and even more recently, like a couple of other uh, really high-end kayaks on the market have come out with this open transom idea. And so the idea of an open transom is that basically you have, you know, about a boat going that way and water kind of that's coming overflowing this way, um, that if the transom of the boat is open, water is just gonna be able to flow really freely out of the back. So if you were out on a lake and it was extremely windy and you had pretty big waves and they're just pouring over the bow faster than your scupper plugs can drain, uh, then the water that wasn't able to drain fast enough would just keep going right out of the back of the transom. Uh, and that is a pretty neat idea. On the back, uh, you know, you do see we have this removable transom. So this is track mounted. It can actually be slid out of those gear tracks uh, that run vertically and slid back in. You know, if you wanted to mount something on the transom of this, I wouldn't recommend like a gas motor or anything, but a light trolling motor could be mounted here. Other than that, there's just a uh, drop down kind of under hull rudder. Uh, over here with a plate on top of it that makes accessing the, the uh, actual rudder assembly really easy. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm really excited to get this thing on the water and see how it does. So let's go for a ride. All right, so we had some GoPro technical difficulties at the launch there, uh, but I think we're all sorted now. Um, launch was really easy for the record this thing's really stable and we've got a nice little launch right here to the side so i was able to just walk into it um, now we're going to deploy the drive and see how easy this is to do on the water kind of twist this here so you guys can see uh, yeah pop those loose line the prop up yeah that's not so bad all right, take a first spin and see how it goes. All right. Drop the rudder. 
rudder. All right, we're off. Pedaling. moving a lot faster than I thought it would just at cruising speed uh, I was kind of expecting like this to be really slow it's a rather wide kayak um, and 14 feet long you know usually get into these 14 foot kind of fishing platforms and they tend to not move very quick on the water uh, while this thing isn't setting any speed records you know all things considered it's cruising along pretty comfortably you know, definitely with most prop drive systems, you have that kind of stop. You know, it's not like a bicycle where it's like perfect constant rotations. Uh, whenever you get to like the top of the pedal, it kind of feels like, you know, you can see my feet kind of boom, boom. Um, that seems to be pretty normal for propeller systems. The steering is pretty smooth. The rudder doesn't come installed on these, so I did made sure that I got it like really tight when putting it in there. It's feeling really good. All right, here we go. Standing up, I've already done this a few times. I didn't really get it on video, but super, super, super easy to stand up in this thing. The seat's comfortable too, so it really is just, you pop up out of the seat, sit back down, pop out of the seat. Cool. Um, walking around in it, you know, you can see I totally am walking around. The boat has a ton of primary stability, like when you're centered. Um, you know, it's got, it seems like it has pretty solid secondary stability. You can see like as I start walking towards the edge here, you know, those rails do start to dip, but I'm standing with both feet kind of on this edge, leaning my weight into this corner. And there's still a good bit of boat still above the water. Um, so if you're a person who likes to dangle your feet over the edge of your kayak or something, probably good here. Um, take a walk up into this bow storage. This is kind of where the boat starts to narrow out. Impressively enough, standing kind of in the front of the bow storage area it's still quite stable like it definitely wants to wiggle a little i'm sure you can see the back of the boat wiggling a ton it's because my pivot point is in this really narrow area but yeah not bad turn it around see if we can take a walk to the back Ooh, a little bit sketchy just a little bit rolling on to the back pop the seat down just stepping over it yeah now, of course, it's going to be quite stable back here. Very wide, open. I am able to get the uh, stern to sink a little bit, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is actually great back here. Um, if you had like a little kid or something you wanted to take along with you, you could totally throw like a little lawn chair back here and just bring him along. Be pretty sweet. I feel honestly quite comfortable walking around back here, so that's pretty awesome. So there you go. Stability is good. I'm gonna mount the GoPro back here near the stern, and then uh, and then I'm gonna do some reversing and see if the water ends up piling back in there. So yeah, let's see how that goes. So definitely reverse, like going basically full speed in reverse, um, about as fast as I could get this thing to go backwards. And uh, not really a whole lot of water was coming in. You can see there was like a little bit kind of starting to splash in when I kind of got up to top speed, but it wasn't, you know, flooding the, the area back there or anything, just a little. And then immediately when we switched back to going forward, it just drained right out. So open transom, pretty cool. Doesn't get water in the boat. 
Pretty neat, lets water out of the boat, also neat. Um, something I also noticed while I was doing that is this thing actually, for being as big as it is, has a great turning radius, so if I max out the rudder, I mean, we're turning pretty tight. And I was kind of just at cruising speed there, and then once we really get into, you know, the turn, turning like crazy good turning radius for a boat that's big, so yeah. Not bad. So overall review, very stable, as anticipated. Um, fairly quick for being as wide and as big of a boat as it is. Um, great, just tons of space. There's just so much space in here. I do not feel cramped on this kayak at all. Um, seats comfortable. The drive is pretty smooth. It's not the quietest drive on the market by any means, um, but this is also a, you know, sub $2,000 14-foot pedal-driven kayak, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, all things considered, if you're looking for a fishing kayak under two grand or a pedal-driven kayak under two grand, and you need something with a lot of space and high weight capacity, uh, yeah, the Riot Mako 14 is definitely a solid choice. Thanks for checking out our video on the Riot Mako 14. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave us a like and subscribe. If you have any questions about the Riot Mako 14 or any other kayaks, be sure to leave it in the comments below and we'll get back to you. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and you enjoy kayaking content, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, we'll be creating a lot more videos in the future. Uh, thanks again for watching. We hope to see you on the water.